Okay, this is multiplying polynomials, introduction to exponents. If you have 2 to the 4th, where 2 is the base and 4 is the exponent, this means that you've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. It's a shorthand notation telling you what the factor is, which is the base, and how many times you have to write the factor down. If I had x to the fifth, where x is the base and 5 is the exponent, then if I had to expand that, I would have x times x times x times x times x. Okay? So it's shorthand notation. It's very quick. And there's places on the calculator that you can do that. And I'll try to bring that here in in just a second. First rule we have is the product rule. If I have b to the m times b to the n, then that can be simplified to b to the m plus n. Notice I'm adding the exponents. So when multiplying exponential expressions with the same base, you just add the exponents. Now I'm going to write this out first in expanded form, and then we'll see why that rule works. So there's 2 squared times, that's that sign, 2 to the third. So if I rewrite that back, into exponential form, my base is 2, and if you'll notice, it's raised to the fifth power. So that's where that formula comes from. I would like you to pause this video and do uh, B, C, and D and see if you come up with what I do, okay? And that's what I came up with. Now, this, these two, B and D, normally don't get people, but in C, if you remember earlier in a prior video, if you do not see an exponent, you see the variable, but not the exponent, it's understood to be 1. So 1 plus 5 would give me 6. Now, that was the product rule, because I've got multiplication going on. In the next rule, which is called the power rule, notice I've got a parentheses. I have B raised to a power, and that in turn is raised to a power. So what that means is for me to simplify this, I just multiply my two exponents. So when an exponential expression is raised to a power, you multiply exponents. So now if I had to expand this, now I'm not going to expand all of these. This is why I've got rules. But let's see. This tells me to write that down five times. Okay, but now if I go back to my prior uh, rule, then that means I need to add these. So that would be 2 to the 15th. So don't expand. You do need to know these rules. So again, pause and see what you come up with the next one, next two. I multiply. This one, be very careful. If you have a negative inside parentheses, you keep it there. 7 times 5 would be 35. If they're real large exponents, then normally those answers are left in that form. Okay. Now, products to power rule. I've got a product here, but inside uh, it's enclosed in parentheses, but it in turn is being raised to an exponent. So like before, this exponent gets multiplied to all the little exponents inside. So when a product is raised to a power, raise each factor to the power. So in this one, remember there's a 1 there and a 1 there. So I would have 5 to the 3rd, x to the 3rd. Now 5 to the 3rd, let me bring in my calculator real quick. And I'll show you something. So if I put my base in, use this little, well you can't see it, Pooh Bear. Use that little caret symbol. Let me press that and I'll bring it back down and I'll put my exponent. So that's 5 to the third. And if I press enter, then that should give me 125. And there it is. I'm going to have to figure out how to use the calculator in this machine here. So that would be my answer on that one. Now I do want to look at the next two because I've got 
uh, negative values inside the parentheses, and any time you have that, when you distribute that outer exponent through, keep parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Now these I'm going to go ahead and find out what they are. A negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. I have four of them. And remember, if you have an even number, you have a positive answer. Negative 2 to the 4th is 16. Y to the 16th. But now this one, if I have five of those, I'm going to have a negative answer. And that will give me a negative 32 Y to the 20th. So let me get my calculator back in here. I'm going to press, now, let me put parentheses. I'm going to raise it to the fourth, and that will give me my 16. Now, I want you to see what happens if I don't use parentheses, because I will get a different answer. Only on this particular problem, only the 2 is being raised to the power. That is considered a negative 1 times 2 to the fourth. So with parentheses and without, it makes a big difference. So I've got another sheet here I need to look at. I'll bring this back down. So now we're going to use those rules to simplify these problems. We're going to multiply first a monomial times a monomial. So I'm going to multiply my coefficients. And then x times x, x squared gives me x to the third. So I do the multiplication like we've always done, but then I have to bring in the rule about um, doing a variable uh, raised to a power times another variable raised to a power. So what I need you to do is try these other uh, two right now, and we'll see what we come up with. I'm going to refocus. That's better. Okay. So pause me and see if we come up with the same thing. So I multiplied my coefficients and I added my exponents. 2 times negative 3 times 8 will give me a negative 40. I've got y squared, y to the first, y to the fourth. So if you add up those exponents, it gives you y to the seventh. Now, multiplying a monomial times a polynomial. In this first instance, I've got a monomial times a binomial. When you have this, whatever you're multiplying by gets distributed through. So 2x times x will give me 2x squared. 2x times 4 will give me a plus 8x. You try this one. Distribute this all the way through to all terms inside. And we'll see if we come up with the same thing. So remember to go uh, numerical coefficient times numerical coefficient. And because you've got x squared times x cubed, that takes you back to your product rule. So it's a monomial times a polynomial. Example 6, I have got a binomial times a binomial. You have to take, now I don't know if you remember, but there's a thing called FOIL. First times first, outside, multiply inside, multiply last. Now where this first part comes from is they take the first value and they distribute through. And if they do that, that's first times first and then you've got the outside. Once that's completed, you come back, pick up the next one, you multiply through. But 3 times x is what the high is for. 3 times 2 is last times last. So let's multiply. x times x is x squared. Outside is a plus 2x. Inside's a plus 3x. Last times last will give me a plus 6. 9 times out of 10, you're going to have like terms. So I've got to combine. 
So pause me, you foil the next one. We'll see if we come up with the same thing. And I do like arrows. And it's my final answer. Last little bit. Multiplying a binomial times a trinomial. These get sort of long. Um, let me try the harder one and I'll let you do the other one. So 3x squared times 2x cubed will give me 6x to the fifth. So that one's done. 3x squared times a negative 5x squared gives me a negative 15x to the fourth. That one times the last, it looks like a 12x to the third. So I've taken the very first one and distributed through. Now let's take the negative 2x and distribute through. See if I have enough room. That times that will give me a negative 4x to the fourth. Negative 2x times negative 5x squared is a positive 10x cubed. And negative 2x times 4x gives me a negative 8x squared. So I do not see any more x to the fifth, so that's going to lead it off. I see that one and that one, so that will give me what? A negative 19x to the fourth. I see that one and that one, and be a plus 22x cubed. And the last one that I haven't done anything with pulls up the rear. If you'll notice, it's already in descending order. Okay? Now you try, pause me, go ahead and try the next one. Let's see if we end up with the same. If you'll notice in this one, I did a little bit different. When I started multiplying the second term through, I went ahead and put it under the like term. That might be a little bit easier. You can do it lengthwise, which is what I'm used to, but this is a legal way as well. So try the homework and see how you do.